Hi there, I'm Andrew Brown. Welcome to Real Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this video, we're going to be looking again at the live coding toolkit for Pure Data. Uh, the live coding toolkit is an extension to Pure Data Vanilla. Um, to follow along with this video um, as a tutorial, you'll need to download the live coding toolkit from the GitHub site. Once you download the live coding toolkit, um, there's a folder with some abstractions in it. You'll need to go to PD and uh, adjust the path to make sure that the folder that's got the live coding toolkit in it um, is in PD's path so PD can see it and access um, all of those things. So um, we're going to uh, work today on uh, creating um, some rhythms and a bit of a synth. We're going to feature the Euclidean rhythms um, object in the live coding toolkit and also do some work with the periodic uh, function as well. You can possibly see that on my screen I'm also running the Hydra system, the visual live coding system from Olivia Jack. Um, so um, we're going to have a little bit of colour in our thing which is going to be nice. Uh, also using Hydra MIDI from Arno Schiff. Um, in order to, to do MIDI communications between PD and Hydra. Um, Hydra will display the PD patch um, on the screen as we create it, but this patch is a little bit expanded and so there may be some pixelation, um, but hopefully you can still read it clearly. All right, so let's uh, get started on some uh, Euclidean rhythms. So I'm going to start with a um, tempo object to give us some timing. And that will go into our Euclidean object. Um, and we'll have a 16 notes um, sequence. We'll play on 13 of those sequences and there'll be no rotation. The output of that is going to be pitch data for a MIDI um, pitch output, so I'm going to quantize that to a scale. It's just kind of a major scale. Um, and then that can be sent out to um, a MIDI synthesizer that I have attached. Um, all right. Lost my mouse, where's that gone? Okay, there it is. Spell Euclidean right. Okay. So that's all good. Um, I might randomize some of those um, outputs. Center around 60. Okay. So it's a little bit more interesting. I'm going to move this Euclidean stuff over here, leave myself some space for other things. Um, you will hear that if I adjust the um, number of steps that we want to play in our Euclidean rhythm. That then that changes um, our rhythm pattern. I can automate that process using a periodic function. I'm going to make it go over quite a long time, number of steps. Um, and maybe we can just go from eight to eight. Actually, no, let's go instead from the center of 12 up and down four. our tempo info into there. So now this um, periodic 
function is constantly updating the density of the Euclidean rhythms that we've got. So another thing that I might want to do, just turn that down a little bit. Another thing that I might want to do is to um, change the um, volume. I'll also use a periodic function for that, so that the um, amplitude changes are relative to the, the sequence length. Um, so that can also get its data out from the tempo to keep in time. And then put that out. Okay, so this is now adjusting those. I might add a little bit more variety in there. Just those, randomize those values just a little bit. Okay, so that's not going too bad. Um, I might add a little bit of a sort of kick drum just to emphasize the downbeat a bit more and provide us with a little bit more stability in our pattern. Um, so I'm going to select every eighth note in the sequence, look at the pitch, and then send that out to another synth. Okay. And I can grab the output, the other output from the Euclidean, which gives us the number rather than just simply a bang. So we can do our modulo on that. Okay. So now we've got a downbeat on the kick drum. It just uh, gives us a little bit more sonic stability. So we've got some things working now in our Euclidean percussive pattern. So I might turn my attention to Hydra and make the um, graphics animate a little bit. Um, with the Hydra MIDI, we can send MIDI data out via controller numbers to Hydra. Um, and if I send the Euclidean rhythm out to um, a parameter that I've got in relation to rotation, then you can see that we're now getting the graphics changing in time with our pattern. That's uh, much more interesting. We might do a bit more of that a little bit later. So next I want to move on to creating a bit of a bass line for this. So I'm going to use a cycle to create a sequence and then send that out to a MIDI synth. take the uh, numbers from the Euclidean rhythm into that as well. Okay, so that's just creating a cyclic pattern of one note at the moment. So we need to provide it with a longer list of pitches. I'm going to make sure my list is an uneven number so we get some rotation around that cycling pattern for interest's sake. And we'll also provide some velocity adjustment as a cycle as well. Okay, so our Euclidean rhythm is controlling both some percussion sounds and um, a bass sequence. Now that we've got this bass sequence going with a cycle, I can might also use that control uh, the Hydra graphics, again a control out on the cycle. And it adds a bit more variation to our graphics. Just, and it's nice that they're all sequenced in time because of the MIDI control between PD and Hydra. Okay, so let's add some um, melodic kind of parts um, on top of that. This we're going to do with um, our periodic function. Create some uh, cosine-like 
phrases. So it's a 16 step sequence, around middle C, going up and down an octave. Um, quantize it to the same scale that we've been using previously. Um, and then send that out via MIDI to a synth. Okay, so if we start generating that, So you can hear that we've got um, a periodic pattern, just a cycle going up and down. So we'll do some additive sine waves to create a much more interesting pattern. So we're gonna send um, another periodic function. Now this is gonna be a seven step function, so we get some phasing going on as they combine together. And I'm gonna push that one in as the input um, to the second one. It needs to get clocked. So now you can hear we've got a more complex sequence pattern being generated. And for good measure, we'll repeat that process once more just to create even more interest. a longer pattern all of these patterns are out of phase so that we get a constantly varying process all right so I can put that going I can add some variety to the dynamics as well Again, using our trusty periodic function. So that will get clocked from there and control the velocity. Um, there you can hear that there's a bit of a delay on the synthesis, uh, on the sound itself. Um, but I'm going to add a bit of structural delay as well. I'm going to use a pipe to, for that delay. So I'm going to take the notes that are being sent to that synth um, and we're going to pass them um, back in again. Um, in order to get the, the delay time for this pipe, we're going to take it out of the tempo, which provides us with the delta time. But we want to multiply that by 8 steps rather than just every one. That's that outlet the tempo. We'll go into the timing for our pipe and then that can go into there as well. So we're getting this um, canonic echo. Okay. Okay, so one final thing I'm going to do is to split this um, melodic contour across two different timbres just to give it a little bit more interest. So the second timbre is going to come from another MIDI synth. Just set up here. And in order to split the parts, I'm going to use uh, the Moses function from PD. Um, so that will take the um, output um, and it will, oops, come on, and the start of as well. And it will send out just the ones that are uh, below 59 um, out this outlet here. So I need to just 
wait Now, if you listen, you'll, you'll hear we're only getting lower pitches um, out that sound. And we'll send the high pitches out to the other synth. And we'll uh, also control its volume. Got everything going. All right, so that's uh, pretty much it for the video. We were able to use the Euclidean. Um, object in the live coding toolkit to create some rhythms use the periodic uh, function for both some uh, velocity changing and some pitch contour creation uh, sending everything out via MIDI using Hydra to give us some interesting graphics thanks very much to Olivia Jack for that um, and controlling that in some small ways with some MIDI data that's uh, synchronized from our music okay hope you enjoyed that I'll see you in another video